What's up, Iron Will Collective? We are back for episode 11 here on the pod. Uh, thanks for joining in, and I'm joined here by Elliot. Hello, friends. So, uh, how are you doing today, Elliot? Pretty good, pretty good. We've got a hopefully a high-quality episode to come at you today. We wanted to bring some really highly applicable information that can help you not just in the gym but in your life today and that is something that we all do something we all have in common is that we have lives (laughs) i've never considered that up until now but you're right man everyone i know that i talk to does have life we are all one whoa we are connected (laughs) <laughs> I want to get to know you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we are connected. That's a... Uh... Please tell us about this. Okay, so in an effort to spread awareness of our of our company here, the Iron Will Collective, which you are a part of, dear listener. Yeah, if you're listening, you are a captive audience, and you have just been conscribed or conscripted. Con- conscripted? Yeah, yeah conscripted yeah. into the collective. Yeah, it's Congrats. A totally involuntary, and it just happened. Um, you're welcome. But yeah, so in an effort to spread awareness of our of our company here, I took to a couple of the uh, Facebook groups online, and in one of these Facebook groups for natural bodybuilding, um, I, I noticed there were a lot of people posting their questions about fitness, and so I went on to try and give some helpful information just helping a brother out help them reach their goals and you know in the meantime also trying to let let people know that we're around and if they ever wanted to learn more on the subject we're here as a valuable resource so one of these posts was a guy who i think he was uh, i can't remember if this guy was just trying to like get bigger in general or to get abs because i responded to a few of them but a curious trend on these Facebook groups is they they seem to be frequented by some like native African bodybuilders, I guess aspiring bodybuilders or just fitness enthusiasts, people who work out in African gyms. So I ended up uh, re- replying to a post that this guy who who lives in Nigeria made, and it was it was like in regards to I don't know getting bigger or his abs, I gave him a pretty straightforward answer. And I was the only one who had replied to his post that gave any information. Everyone else was like, stop eating, bro, or uh, just keep lifting heavy, bro, it'll be fine. And, you know, terrible advice, not not really pertaining to uh, the question he had asked. So I wrote up my response. He sent me a private message a couple days later. And he's like, Hey bro, you're gonna be of use to me. I think uh, I'd like to to talk to you more. And then he asked me, "Are you a gym lover?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm a gym lover. I work at a gym, and uh, I'm I'm at gyms pretty often. Definitely a gym lover." And I asked him, "So you have any goals to be a bodybuilder or ever compete?" And he's like, "Nah, maybe in the future. I've never thought of that for myself. But we're connected, and I need to get to know you." And after that, I kind of, uh, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> so I, I don't remember what I would have said back. I don't think I even responded, actually. I was a little weirded out. But he ended up writing back to me a couple days later, and he's like, please kindly respond. <laughs> and I still didn't know what to say. So he kept, he kept insinuating that we should be closer and I don't really know in what way he was talking about, but hey. All right, so this could have gone one of two ways. Either your buddy, he wanted to share fitness advice between the two of you for mutual benefit, or he wanted to send you pictures of his big old elephant wiener. <laughs> There's Those are the two logical outcomes from this situation as far as I see it. Are you kidding me, man? That's Both a double wins. wins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. At least we're on the same page here knowing. So I think it's, a, well, uh, a good tactic that you're taking now to take a while to respond. Really, the ball is in your court, and that is where you get the power. Anyone knows in any relationships, you always want that ball in your court. You don't... 
give the girl your phone number. You ask for hers so you can make it happen because she's never going to call you. That's very true. That's very true. So I guess I'm the girl in this case. You are, and he wants it. He wants nice. it bad, but he's not doing it right. But I got to say, all jokes aside, that anyone listening to this, be casual on the internet. Yeah. Don't don't be too pushy like this. This For is real. a little weird. Like maybe things are different in Nigeria. Maybe the culture is different to where that would be something like people are more looking to make internet deep internet relationships. <laughs> but here, mm, not so much really. No, it was weird mm. because like you know how on Facebook Messenger you can see when somebody's online. I thought because you know this guy's actually on the other side of the world that. You know, maybe when I'm on there, he's not going to be. But no, he was on all day long. And so that's that's when those messages would roll through. Where that might have like, been all he'd, night. He'd respond. Yeah, that's when true. He, when he's all horny. Oh, damn. Yeah. He's like, I found this man booty hunk call. from America. <laughs> I'm going to get him to send me a picture of his wiener. Or I'm going to send him a picture of mine. <laughs> that is all that guy's thinking of. He doesn't want abs. He wants nudes. I need to respond to this guy. You really do. I do. Invite him out. We can get him on the podcast. <laughs> I'm like, dude, all right, so how is that uh, how is that friendship building on the internet working out for you? Oh, man, it's, it's probably going really well. I mean, his his approach is really straightforward, and people seem to love that. But it's a numbers game. If you give, if he's dropping that line to multiple people, that's going to increase the odds that someone is going to be responsive to that. So he probably is making some friends, which, honestly, good for him. Uh, if that's really what he's after and not sexual harassment, then good for him. I hope he makes his friends. But yeah. unfortunately, he found uh, that the Western culture is more uh, more wary about strangers on the Internet. Or maybe at least just we are. I know there are plenty yeah. of people in our culture, too, that are fully willing to interact on a... Uh, on a deeper level with strangers over the internet, but I don't know, that's just not my cup of tea. No, same here. I mean, it's honestly, it's painful enough to get on the internet sometimes. What with all the distractions, just and keep then, it casual. Yeah, yeah, just if you're gonna want to make cash. friends, yeah, keep it cash. I have no problem with uh, talking to a stranger like you did originally, commenting on their post, trying to possibly offer feedback, advice. Um, congratulations for doing yeah. something well like any of that stuff i think is not creepy but once you start dming and uh wanting to <laughs> we're connected bro. yeah like that's where it gets weird it's because we're anyway I, i'm pretty much just jealous that nobody has done that with me <laughs> so i'm just bitter don't you, don't take anything i said uh very seriously okay you need to get on the right forums these this natural bodybuilding one that i'm a part of i'm telling you it has like an abundance of these african guys and i have a lot of respect for them because in some of their posts you can see pictures of like the the facilities that they work out in and i'm i'm not even kidding there was one dude that behind him he had a barbell that had like cinder blocks on the side of it or bricks or something they had like a treadmill from 1984 and a stair stepper from like 97 and this guy was all smiles he was flexing he was pretty is pretty juicy too so i mean whatever they've got over there they're making it work and i'd i'm always down to help somebody out who who's on a similar path but yeah just to reiterate what you just said don't be so forward if you, if you want my booty just i mean just, uh, you got to come and bring them flowers or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least, at the very least. I mean, it's not going to be as easy as a Facebook DM. Yeah, and you're not looking for that LDR right now, that long-distance relationship. <laughs> no, no, definitely. But, yeah, so that's the story of that guy. Uh, we hope you're doing great out there. We've got a pretty different topic today. Uh, it, we're, we're stepping outside of the gym a little bit with yeah, this one. Yeah, so... We want to kind of zoom out and bring a little bit more awareness to some of the habits that you can practice and form inside of the gym and what that would look like outside of the gym as well. So Definitely. So first, I want to start by, by pointing out the obvious and that fitness can be a lifestyle, but exercise is a very small portion of fitness. Fitness is a day in, day out endeavor. Exercise is like an hour per session type of endeavor or uh, however long you train or however many times during the week. A small fraction of your life. 
So why not take what you learn in the gym, not just the strength and the endurance and the physical aspects of it, but why don't you take the lessons that you have learned through discipline, dedication, hard work, consistency, and consider putting some of those characteristics into other parts of your life, possibly working toward a career that you would like or a relationship that you want to succeed. Um, you want to clean up your house and you need, you've been trying to find the will to do it. All of the, the lessons that you learn in the gym or not all of them, but <laughs> say like a bicep curl is not going to help you <laughs> vacuum your living room. But, um, the mental strengthening aspects of the gym can really help you to become a generally successful person, hopefully find some fulfillment in your life and improve on the large scale, not just as far as your aesthetics or your, your performance, improve everything as a person. Yeah. So first off, I think the most important part about being successful in the gym is consistency. Let's talk about how consistency in other parts of your life can translate to success. That's a big one. And that, that one is tied very, very closely to discipline. Um, you can be motivated and have a certain level of consistency, but because motivation is, is fleeting, it's not going to keep you on track all the time. It's discipline that does that. So consistency in and out of the gym means that you're making small steps or at least steps in general towards your bigger goal. So at the gym, it's increasing the weight on the bar or you know changing the way that you look, feeling better. At work or anywhere else, it's just showing up. It's realizing that not every day is going to be the you know a 10 out of 10 but that you do need to show up and put your reps in and do the work that that you're assigned because that is what brings you closer that's taking action without action it's just stagnation it is shit in a cup and drink it surprising how much people fail with that step that simplest thing is showing up like that's like one half of, in my opinion, what it takes to, to get good at something if you're gonna put it at the simplest level is show up and try your hardest. I used to work in retail management and the amount of people that I worked with <laughs> who at this relatively relaxed and stress-free job failed to show up on a, con like you can be consistently bad too. <laughs> they yeah, failed to show up on a consistent basis and that just baffled me. I'm like, all right, do you, I, I get it that this might not be the most fun thing in the world, but you know that you're letting a lot of people down by not showing up and you're also screwing yourself over and not making the money that you probably want. Probably the whole reason you got this job is to make money. You're, you're not doing any of that. So show up. Number one, anything you want in your life, it's going to start with that. Say you want to play the flute and you want to join an orchestra or something. That's all going to start with you fucking playing the flute every day yeah. you you need to get that in your hands and you need to play it so you can translate this to really whatever it is that you want um let's think of something that you couldn't translate showing up every day and uh preferably trying your hardest at let's see here what what would you not make gains doing uh i mean can't do it with driving if you if you don't try your hardest at driving bad things happen um Oh, if you, you show up at the drug dealer's house and you eat your crack every day, I don't know. <laughs> That's probably not good. I mean, if your goal is to be like the, the number one crackhead. Yeah, I'm a go. disciplined and consistent crackhead. I never, <laughs> never miss a session. <laughs> That's probably not good. Well, so. <laughs> but hey, still building a habit. If that, if that energy was redirected, guess what? You'd have a beast on your hands. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the concept of an addictive personality. Yeah. If you're someone who who may at times struggle with that, how about you, you adjust your perspective on it and try to put that to work in your favor. So if you're an addict, you have an addictive personality and you typically get hooked on less beneficial things, why don't you try to get yourself hooked on something good? Maybe reading, for example. 
instead of drinking a soda every day, read a for a half an hour or something like yeah see if you can turn that addictive personality into something that is going to better you in the long run instead of just spinning your wheels and potentially hurting you it's just channeling your energies to productive i mean it's a it's in a pantera song and i think in the song he's talking about hate but in this case we'll talk about consistency and channel your your consistency to productive you can move mountains it 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 is surprising at how much you can accomplish when you just put your head down and show up. But with that, I think it's really, really important to talk about failure because failure is another thing that will consistently happen. And I don't want, I don't want you to think that I'm talking failure on a catastrophic level. Like you're, you're a piece of crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrible. You can't do anything right type of failure. No, I mean failure. Setbacks. Setbacks. Yeah, that's a good word for it. So I think failure is a little too strong in some cases. In some cases, it's very, very apt. Um, it's an apt description. But failure in the gym is very common. And you put it best in one of your videos. And I, I've repeated it many times to my clients since then. Failure is not an option. It's a requirement. In the gym. That's so true. It's so true. I mean, you don't have to take every set to failure and just like gas yourself out, but definitely expect that there will come a time where you fatigue so hard and you've put so much of your effort into something that the lift just isn't going to happen. In the gym, it, I mean, depending on your personality type or how, how competitive you are with yourself or how hard you are on yourself, missing a lift might, might not be the worst thing in the world it might just encourage you to show up again and try try again the next time. In life, I mean, we take L's all the time. It could be not getting the job and you know, you've been you've been showing up to interviews pretty consistently. Well, you missed another one. That's failure, but you better learn what upper cross syndrome is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And know your terms going in. Uh, but it's like I, I've been I've been talking to a, a couple of different people on this, and I guess the consensus is when it comes to failure, it really pays to change your perspective and realize that there really is no such thing as a failure unless that that's how you interpret the situation. If you take something as a complete total loss, and like I said, there are some cases where that might be true, but in ninety five percent of cases. I think that failure can be perceived as just a learning experience. What not to do the next time. Exactly. It's all about your perspective. If you can take something from that, then you're even in failure, you're gaining something. Yeah. And then that way the next time, or maybe the, the time after that, you're going to succeed at what you originally set out to do. The difference in how a person responds to failure can really dictate their future successes as a whole. People like to say bad things about certain generations and stuff like that. I don't think you can really uh, you can really generalize it that much, but people like to talk about the younger generation, especially saying that they're so like entitled and mm. um, babied and stuff like that, and that at the the slightest sign of difficulty or or like say if you are at a job and you get talked to by your manager or something, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna go into your shell and you're gonna freaking shut down. The person who does that is almost certainly not gonna get as far as someone who takes that and learns from it and steps forward because of it. It's called failing forward. Fail forward. Yeah. You those are really your only options. Is you can you can either lay down and die, <laughs> or you can you can step up, sack up, and step forward with your life using what has happened to you as experience knowledge that will potentially get you through that next hurdle and at the very least you'll have something to look back on to show that you can persevere when during trying times yeah and i mean don't get me wrong it hurts right there oftentimes failing forward can still be painful even in the gym but you have to be able to take a step back and realize, okay, what went wrong here? Be objective with yourself and try to, try to, I'm going to sound a little robotic here, 
try to get rid of the emotion behind your thinking because that honestly it, it doesn't serve you when it comes to trying to figure out how you're going to improve you need to be really level-headed about that and be honest with yourself be able to step back and say okay i messed up it's not because i'm a shitty person it's because this and this and this what can i do better the next time and I mean, if it comes down to it and you feel like the, the main issue is with yourself, well, then there's your lesson. That's how you fail forward. You know what you need to work on. A good example of this may be that you are someone who is dieting, trying to lose weight, and you did something that you know you're not supposed to do. Maybe you had a piece of cake that's going to put you over your calories mm -hmm. for the day. Don't look at that as the the wheels falling off and like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to be fat forever. Look at that as like, all right, I, I slipped up. I'm human. Accidents or not so much accidents. Mistakes will be made. And I am going to not do that tomorrow. And I'm going to be all right. I'm going to hit my goal. I'm not going to let this one stumble stop me from striving for a better thing. It's a teachable moment, and if uh, your teachable moment carries shame with it, then... And you know it's a good one. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Shame is actually the first quality that you gain working out or through uh, fitness is uh, above consistency, above discipline. You've got shame. You learn how to hold that shame and use it as motivate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shame... Shame can be pretty crappy for a lot of people. Especially if you're Japanese. Oh, yeah. I mean, then you die. Then you die. You don't want to dishonor your family. That's, that's bad. Have you seen Mulan? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. They're Chinese. Either Ooh, way. We're going to have to edit this one. Yeah. This is a little insensitive of you to get that wrong. Hey, you know, much respect with all due respect. But Yeah, I love those dancing scenes. And singing <laughs> the and like, songs. they're gonna be in a war and they're spending all their time doing choreographed dance right. these people are all gonna get slaughtered <laughs> it's okay because the huns did the same <laughs> <laughs> they just dance battled yeah they didn't show it but that's what they were doing okay that makes more sense no shame there nope <laughs> so just taking extract what you can from the moment and um there's something that the, the military does that i really enjoy and that's um after action reports or AARs and I learned about those through reading a, a a book written by a guy called David Goggins which you and I have spoken about this guy's a crazy navy seal who's put himself through hell and back uh 3 times to be exact because he did his hell week navy seal hell week 3 times in 1 year not to mention the other crazy oh. athletic feats that he is he has put himself through and to success yeah yeah he uh I mean, ultra marathons through the desert with broken feet, broken shins, um, hips so tight he couldn't stand up straight. Like this guy, this guy knows how to push himself and he knows how to grow from failures because from his perspective, he had an abundance of failures, but he refused to let him let himself be weighed down by those. So anytime something would go wrong, he'd be able to take a step back and zoom out again, take that that objective view and do these after action reports and describe in detail what what went wrong where were the issues what you know how to remedy remedy the situation going forward and how not to make that mistake hopefully so be objective and an important thing is something that's easier said than done for sure is to not identify too closely with any given thing you really, you really are just who you are. You, you don't want to be stuck in the, the thought that you need to be something. Like you yeah. say, like, if I were to ask you, John, who are you? How would you answer? Man, <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, well, just maybe I'll, I'll trying to get better. <laughs> so I'll, all right, I'll answer maybe a, a differently for you. I'll say yeah, you, yeah. you are a... You are a trainer, you are a coach, you are a businessman, you are a boyfriend, you're a lot of different things. Yeah. But the thing is, you don't want to identify with any of these things too closely because they could go at any moment. Right. You, you never know. Like These things can change, and at the end of the day, you're left with just you. You just are. Yeah. That's just you. 
Yeah, and that that's the thing. I guess I've I've thought about it so much that like I I really don't identify with any of the titles because like you're you're right, it can change and I try not to get myself a too attached with any one of those things. Although I don't see myself not being a trainer or biz- or a businessman or a boyfriend or um, any of those things anytime soon. Like I'm, I'm probably gonna be those things for some time now. But there's there's a saying I really like too, and it's what is it? I'm I'm less than the best, or I'm less. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm not gonna screw this one up. <laughs> I'm more than the worst thing I've ever done. I'm less than the best thing I've ever won. Does that make sense? So it puts you right in the middle. Or how Conor McGregor said it is, go to sleep on a win, wake up with a loss. Just humble yourself and don't don't identify too closely with, you know, being the winner or being the loser. You're right in the middle. That arrogant fucking guy said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at, right? Must have been an old quote. It was. <laughs> yeah, because now all I know about him is he's punching old men in the face for not liking his shitty whiskey. Oh, damn. <laughs> really? Yeah. Whoa. I haven't kept up with him. Last I, last I heard about old Connor was uh, he flew all the way from Ireland to New York City so he can like trash his, his rival's bus and beat up some of his, his posse. Like he brought his, his people from Ireland and they just went and started a fight with these people like for no apparent reason. All right. So that, this is the type of person that you all should strive to be. There you go. Violent, yeah. in, uh, <laughs> unsensible, um, <laughs> make bad whiskey, all of the above. You need to check some boxes here if you want to be successful in your life. That's it. You know, I think that from the from the sound of it, I don't know Connor. I don't know his story too well. I watched the documentary on Netflix. Highly recommended. It. It's called Notorious. Check it out if you want. But... I think that what what happened to this guy is he had to develop characteristics inside of the gym to such a point that it was completely impossible to separate his his gym self from his outside of the gym self. He was just so driven, so uh, myopic with his efforts and dedicated to what he was doing that he lived, breathed, and slept what you know MMA and winning. So with that, some other characteristics probably fell by the wayside, but he, he was able to foster that discipline, that consistency, and in his case, um, intensity was another thing. I got to assume, too, that this, this facade he's got as like the uh, swagger walking tough guy yeah. who will, t- takes no quarter is probably something that was manufactured as well through through the fame that he's reached through becoming an elite level athlete. He that's got to change someone is becoming the center of attention and filthy filthy rich. Yeah. Um and so he was yeah. kind of like that from the start. I mean, just based off this documentary, even his first fight, he kind of got in trouble because he knocked this guy out and he was he was kind of gloating up there on on stage, right? In the ring. He was getting really riled up and he was super pumped but kind of just I forget the word for it but he wasn't being in the coach's perspective a good sport about about his win so he had that that big attitude right from the get-go I think that you're right though it it was probably further ingrained because the ego man all that stuff feeding into it yeah growing growing a, a fantastically huge ego which I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it comes from a lack of balance, I think. So that quote that he said was was really good. But I think when he made when he said that quote, he hadn't experienced loss as much as you know I, he has at this point. Well, shit, I don't think he's ever gonna experience major loss at this point. Like it, whether or not he loses a fight or whatever. Like, yeah, I'm sh- definitely things will happen in his life. You know. You, you are, you're always gaining and you're always losing. Yeah. But for someone with such abundance as he has as far as the money that he's got and Ooh. stuff like that, he's he's going to have to work extra hard to find meaning in his life because he's got so much, like, of a- anything he wants 
that typically people who get into that situation will then resort to to find uh, finding meaning in pain because that's all that they feel. Yeah. If you've got everything you want, you're kind of desensitized to that. You're jaded. And now the only thing that you gets a rise out of you is conflict or, or pain or something like that. So yeah, that's another kind of uh, a common archetype among super, people. Super true. Very common. I mean, it, it's common amongst fighters especially. I think that what they do inside of the gym is they they sharpen all these characteristics to a point where like i said about connor there's no choice but to carry that that same attitude outside of the gym like even a guy like mike tyson had a really hard time especially after retirement it's like what do you do with yourself you you know one way of living and that's to like be super intense to be super disciplined really motivated just to win and to dominate but when that challenge is no longer there you find yourself challenged with feeling any any pleasure out of things that in your opinion are probably mundane so that further reinforces the statement that really all of us should work to be able to find inner peace and fulfillment through through the small things in life because you really like in like you said it was mike tyson like they're comes a day and with any athlete you hear about this a lot with football players as well as like when when their body gives out on them and it's time to retire they don't know what to do with themselves because that's yeah. what they're 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 a football player that's what they do yeah. so it can be hard for a lot of these guys to transition back into a a normal life um hopefully they were diligent about saving money while doing so for like professional athletes in these cases so they don't have to worry about that aspect but what they do have to worry about is being able to live every day and not be like depressed because they don't have what they once had. You have to learn how to find joy in, in small things in life. And that is how you will, you should be able to, to find a sustainable happiness, yeah. something that you'll always have. It's another challenge, but I think that that is something that you can also work on inside of the gym because Let's say let's say you go in and well anybody who's recovered from an injury could probably relate to this. Okay. So you're injured and you can't do movements. Maybe I don't know. Let's say a hand injury because that's kind of relevant. I have a client who just broke his hand and now we're finding a workaround on how he can stay in the best shape possible without you know, exacerbating any of this injury that he's already sustained. So there's a lot off the table, a lot of things you can't do. Just hand is not going to be used for at least two months right now. Um, now, eventually, time will pass. Wounds will heal, hopefully, and hopefully it's a, it's a pretty clean recovery, and he's able to do these movements again. Well, then there you go. That's your satisfaction from the little things. It's like a, a saying that, that I heard about, uh, I wish I had better shoes until I met the man with no legs. Mm -hmm. You know, just like... Exactly, yeah. You, um, it can be easy to look past the fortune that you really have. And a great way to do that is to, to look at someone who's got nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to, to humble yourself out and be like, all right, well, I don't really have too much room to complain about this. I'm gonna, I wanna be more grateful about what I've got because, um, that guy with no legs could very well be way happier than you with way less than you. So yeah, that just goes to show you that happiness comes from within first and right. foremost. But I think this is a good segue into another valuable lesson learned in the gym, and that is something that uh, a concept of enjoying the process that is uh. frequently talked about. Enjoying the process in the gym means even though that you're not receiving instant gratification day in, day out after your your exercise, you're not seeing like brand new muscle appear before mm. your eyes. You would benefit from taking a positive view at the situation as a whole, not just as a means to an end, but find things that you like to do and then do them. And then that way you can truly enjoy the day in day out grind that being said it's always going to be a grind it's always going to be work but 
if you can put yourself into that headspace to where you're doing this, you have the privilege of a healthy, able body to be able to do this, and you know that each rep is going to put you a step closer to your ultimate goals. When you think of it that way, for me at least, it's like, yeah, like this is a no-brainer. Like, yeah, I'm happy to spend my time doing this. So consider that as far as your other endeavors go as well. Say you have always, again, back to like music, say you want to play that flute. Um, take every, even though at the beginning, playing an instrument especially, at the beginning, the, the learning curve is rough. It's, yeah. it's tough to start learning an instrument. But the better you get, the easier learning in the future becomes. So you have to look at that first day that you pick up the flute, when your fingers do not work in coordination how you want them to, and your breath is not as, <laughs> as solid as it should be to play correctly. You need to look at that as your first step toward making it what it needs to be. And maybe you pick an easy song to start with. Mary Had a Little Lamb or something. Once you're able to hit that, you can look at that like, wow, like I, a couple days ago, I could hardly even make this thing make a sound. But now I can already play a melody. So enjoy the process. Uh, yeah, exactly. So what would that look like on a, a career level? Like maybe someone starting out in college and who wants to be a lawyer or something. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because school can definitely be monotony. Showing up every single day. A lot of these classes don't have much to do with what you eventually. At want least to be at doing. the beginning. Yeah. Them prereqs. Yeah. I mean, that I for one I am not interested in college just because I don't want to take a damn math class. Like get yeah. that out of my face. But that being said, if I were to come on the opportunity to go in study for a degree that is of my interest, I would try my best to be successful with all classes that I take, knowing that they are drops in the bucket. Yeah, exactly. It, it's part of the process, and the process, as long as you stick to it, will lead you to a desired outcome. But I think that something you mentioned with, with the flute analogy there was to choose an easy song, which translates to the gym and other aspects of life at, into um, setting smaller goals, setting manageable goals, things that you know you can hit so long as you show up, there's your consistency, and so long as you can persevere through the, the moments of difficulty, that's discipline. And that's first and foremost, you're not gonna do shit if you don't show up, you're not yeah. you're not gonna make any steps toward improving. So, say you are really wanting to get stronger with the bench press, you are starting with the bar. The only way that you are going to add any plates to that in the foreseeable future is if you get in there and you do the damn thing, and you're not mm -hmm. making excuses to why you can't get there. That kind of shows that you don't you might not want it as bad as you think you do. Right, but. That thing, like, for a lot of people, you'll reach that threshold of, like, I want this, don't want it bad enough, so I'm not going to be consistent about it. Yeah. But at some point, something may change for them, and they're like, all right, it's time to get serious. And then that's when their the benefits will start to come. Yeah. For me, that happened after making the same mistakes over and over and over again and realizing that it hurt more to keep making those mistakes than it did to just show up and keep doing what I need to do in order to become more of the person that I wanted to be. I mean, you don't, nobody ever became great by sitting back in a chair and relaxing. You have to be in action. You, you have might be to great show. at sitting out a chair though. Yeah. Yeah. There you go with your weak buns, <laughs> but no weak Very buns subjective. here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to show up and put in the work because it's that effort that moves you closer. Now that's not to say every day has to be super productive or anything like that. I mean, obviously, that's what you want to strive for. You want to put in your best effort. Just think back to that cake analogy for the person trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Just don't let anything derail you. Setbacks will happen, but it's about how you react to those setbacks. Well, we were talking about stress during the last episode, and I think that, or was it the last one? I don't know, one of these episodes. We were talking about stress, and we made note that the body, the mind requires a certain degree of stress. I mean, that's what exercise is too, but it also requires a certain degree of recovery. Otherwise, it's unsustainable. Gotta so, find that balance. Yeah, exactly. You, Perfection is an illusion. Nobody has it. Nobody's born perfect. I mean, think Except of- Except for you. Aww. 
<laughs> and that makes two of us. <laughs> but shit, it's gonna it's gonna become the the humble party. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Just you. The modesty boys. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's hey, new boy band right there. <laughs> we dance really uh really Walt modest style. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all right. <laughs> but you know, just remembering that it's all connected. Remember that you are bound to fail. Leave that room for error, but don't let yourself get too down on it. It's it's the gym analogy. Again, you you take yourself into the dungeon. You're doing your lift. You fell on the last one. Well, that can either make you so upset that it ruins the rest of your day and you crash on your diet or you know you don't sleep as much or I, I don't know these are just uh, different things that could happen or you could interpret that as a learning moment a teachable moment where you say okay I had a sticking point midway through my bench press my arms got stuck and I needed my spotter to help lift the weight up so I know what to do I'm gonna work on the specific part that specific part of the lift cool so not only do you have something else to do, but that's going to help move you forward and you're, you're not going to just be stuck spinning your wheels, being upset. Don't make that same mistake over and over and over again like I did. Just realize that it, it's better, it's easier in the long run to just suck it up and make that small goal, hit that goal and try to hit the one after that. Something that I like to tell my clients often is to enjoy the small successes, the small incremental successes over time. So that's really what we're after is day in, day out. We just want to get a little bit better. Yeah. We're not looking for any cosmic leaps here because that type of stuff is not very likely, especially in fitness. And you can't really expect that to be likely as far as your career or relationships and stuff like that either. Mm -hmm. So I think that one more rep, five more pounds, um, wh whatever small, small um, but uh, tangible improvements that you can make will all add up in the future to be that large, that large goal that you want. Yeah, man. Um, a lot of people underestimate what they can do in a year and they overestimate what they can do in a month. So that's to say, make your goals manageable, you know, just yeah, try, try not to set yourself up for failure by setting goals that are not reasonable to your position in life. Say right now you are a, a busy professional who works 40 to 60 hours per week and you've got a family, but your fitness goal right now is that you want to run a marathon and you have never ran a marathon before and you are very sedentary currently. Um, but your goal is like, I want to run a marathon. Just like, no, that's not, that shouldn't be your goal right now. Your, sh your goal right now should be to start to, to build a healthy habit of exercise. If yeah. that will set you one set, step closer toward that marathon, maybe in a few years. But if you're like, I want to run a marathon in, in three months, coming off of a doing nothing ever before in your life, you're, you're going to get sad when that doesn't happen. Right. Or when you go to try to do this marathon and you throw up after a mile <laughs> and you quit and you go get ice cream and it makes you feel better for a minute, but then you go back to your house and you're sad and you eat more ice cream and then you quit going to the gym because you ate a bunch of ice cream the day before because you don't feel good and you're, you're just like, I'm just fat anyway. Uh, that cycle. It's, yeah, the vicious cycle. Um, I want to say uh, another thing that I saw this weekend. I went hiking in uh, a good little little area in town called Sanctuary Cove, and they have these little uh, plaques with quotes on around them. And I don't remember this quote verbatim, but it s essentially said something along the lines that uh, everything is inter an interconnected web. We are merely a strand in that web. But what we do to ourselves or what we do to the, to the web will directly affect us. Mm. So, um, of course, what we do to ourselves, but what we do to the web. So say like in the sense of nature, say if we cut down a bunch of trees, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we as uh, the individual are eventually going to uh, 
have to deal with the consequences of that. Right. Similarly, similarly for your life, you can picture your life as a whole as one web and then exercise being a strand in that web and other habits of your life being strands in that web. Um, what happens to one will reverberate throughout the entirety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's a really cool way of putting it. So I never thought about it that way. But kind of just going back a little, I think it's good to set big goals. It's really good, actually, especially if you're somebody who is goal oriented. You have to be pretty mature about it, though. Like, I th or you have to be a pretty mature person to be able to set that that long term big goal. Yeah. Um. You you have to kind of know what you're getting into to allow that to be realistic. Um. You can't you can't be looking for that that hack and that easy way if you're setting. Oh no. Like you can't sure. be that person who thinks that that's even a thing. No. Yeah. You have to, if you're setting a long-term goal, you have to be the kind of person who's ready to grind, ready to work day in, day out, ready to show up every day and try your hardest. Exactly. And set those small goals. So it's like, if you do want to run a marathon and you're that busy 40, 60 hour work week person, then yeah, it's a big goal and you'll have to set smaller goals to take you there, but it's still completely possible. Anything's possible so long as you can break it down into small enough pieces and just chip away. But just know there's a fine line between running a marathon and watching a marathon. It can turn at any moment in toward that less desirable. Yeah. And so being able to evaluate your process and evaluate the reality of the situation without, you know, just living in, in la la land. I mean, to put it to put it this way, when I first set out to work out. My goal was I wanted to look like Arnold. I wanted to be a big 200 plus pound guy lean with abs. And we got John on that estrogen cycle right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, the, the memories are growing, <laughs> growing in pretty hard right now. It's good stuff. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a big goal. And I actually didn't know what it would entail, but along this way, I've learned a lot and I've learned the importance of being able to like parse that goal out and approach it from, from two different viewpoints. You have your long view and then you have your short view. So what you're doing moment to moment really, really matters because it's in the moment that you are, you're living life. Life happens in the moment. It doesn't happen in your plans. So you have to be able to do all those things necessary to achieve that goal. And another example is like, if you want to be, I don't know, a good, a good parent or something, or maybe you have like pets or cats or dogs, I'm a dog dad. So if I want to be a good dog dad, then I have to set some goals there too. Like, okay, well, my dogs need to go out every day. That, that's a pretty big goal for me if I'm busy, right? Going out every single day, it could be hard to find time. But then being able to like, break that down and decide, okay, in order to make this happen, we're going to have to establish our routine and I'll be able to figure out what time of day is best or what routine works best. Maybe I don't have to take them out every day. So we're constantly evaluating, but keeping that, that main objective in mind, the main mission. So I think that's really how you, how you succeed long term. Yeah. You have to be flexible. You have to be adaptable because as you said, rarely do things play out the way that you anticipate yeah crap always comes up and uh whether it be good or bad things that you have to deal with and you got you just got to roll with the punches yeah you have sure. to find a way if you want something bad enough you'll find a way to make it happen so for instance on a a professional um a professional example would be someone who wants to become a lawyer do they think that they can just walk into a firm and drop in their application. <laughs> um, having not, never gone to college before, ha having their only experience being they watch Better Call Saul. <laughs> um, no. I think Kim Kardashian did that. Yeah, but yeah, but she's uh, affluent, yeah. so oh, I would hire her. Exception. She's like, yeah. 
Actually, her dad is a lawyer, right? The O.J. Simpson lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a hereditary lawyer. Yeah, she's got it in her blood. But so, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's called nepotism. That's, uh, yeah. you, you just, if it's in your family, you're good to go. Just, you're hired. Yeah. But, but in actuality, if you don't have the benefits of nepotism, then you are going to have to chop your goal up. So long-term goal, 18-year-old, fresh out of high school, I want to be a lawyer. Maybe if you go and drop in an application, Maybe and talk to the people there. They'll have something smaller that you can start with. Possibly Better Call Saul working in the mailroom. Or better yet, you better have already gone to the local university and applied to study there to become a lawyer because that is the logical first step is to go and get that first semester of college out of the way. That should be your first step. Similarly to another trade or another profession, you're going to want to go and get that education first. And there's no way to skip it. There's no way around it. So if you unless, set a lofty unless goal... Unless nepotism. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's a different case. There's always exceptions to the rule. But, I mean, when you set a lofty goal, you need to know there's no way around that hard work. It's going to take effort. It's going to take sweat. Um, it's just a lot from you. It's not going to be easy. So... This is pretty cliche cliche at this point, and you know, a lot of people hear it. We Iron Will Collective is synonymous with cliche. <laughs> yeah. All day, every day, mm-hmm. cliche. But it's it's because it's true and we have to highlight the importance of this. We we've seen it, you and I both with our clients. People who say they want something, but they don't take the action to get themselves there. So you don't have to be a scientist to understand that math doesn't add up. You can't say you want it and not do anything towards it. You'll, you'll never get there. Exactly. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it a sheep. <laughs> Unless it shows up every day. <laughs> yeah, then that horse is going to become a sheep. Um, but yeah, really, dedication, discipline, mm-hmm. consistency, hard work, these are all things that you can instill within yourself through dedicating yourself to fitness and caring about your body. Not only will these traits positively carry over to other aspects of your life, but you're going to be able to do it feeling better, mm-hmm. looking better, preferably having or probably having more confidence. I would prefer you did have more confidence. Yeah. But <laughs> um, to tie it all together, if you can really notice what you've got through the struggles and successes in your life and you can use that to work forward to your new goals again i think it's very important that we don't stagnate and at some point after reaching your goal say you got your college degree and you got that job why stop there why don't you start to uh climb up the the corporate ladder or what have you yeah don't Don't ever stop learning. Don't ever stop trying to better yourself. And what better way to to drive these points home than learning it firsthand for yourself through blood, sweat, and tears, exercising. And not only, again, will that benefit you throughout your your mental struggles in life, but who who doesn't want to be fit? And feel good. Like that above all, honestly. I mean, like even if you're going to be a bum and not <laughs> strive for anything, at least you're, you're healthy. Yeah. At very least. And you're not feeling like crap uh, other than mentally. <laughs> like you're, you're <laughs> probably, I, I don't know. Yeah, right? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But the, the key to happiness is progress. And progress comes from all those things that you just mentioned. Discipline, dedication, and, you know, Go back in the podcast. Listen to it again if you need to. Understand that all these characteristics can be built and fostered in the gym, but there is heavy carryover to everything else. And know that no goal is too big once you're able to break it down into smaller bits. My goal of becoming 200 plus pounds with abs and lean, that was a pretty big goal. I'm still chipping away at it. It's going to take years. I realize that. And drugs. Yeah, and drugs. Well, hey, I mean, at this point, my goal's modified. It's like, fluid. Like the pot. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's totally. <laughs> no. That's the kind of drugs we're talking about. 
<laughs> Tylenol. <laughs> Actually, crack. Yeah, it'll just make you all skinny. Yeah. We've been talking about crack a lot on this episode. This is a good one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's going in the thumbnail. <laughs> uh, I want to note as well that we have said multiple times that the, the uh, skills learned in the gym, the mental skills learned in the gym can be transferred throughout your life. Maybe you've already got some of these skills that you've learned from doing some of this other thing. Maybe you are a professional right now who has gone through college to achieve a job in a field that interests you and that you care about. How about you use what got you there to get you into fitness, getting you to reach your goals as far as your health is concerned? Yeah. It, it goes every way. It's, it's super... Like, what's the thing in math? The... Uh, Oh man, uh, back to math, man. I need to hit that college class, <laughs> but it's the uh, commutative property or something like that, where what you do to one side, you do to the other. And, oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Division or whatever. Yep. Um, Both so, sides have to be balanced. Exactly. Exactly. It's very true. Um, another thing that that I'd like to mention really quickly here is the fact that without a strong reason to to pursue these goals, when things get difficult you will have very little reason to to continue. So you, you really need to be secure on the reasons you're doing this. And again, the objective look, that's where it really comes down that's where it comes in handy. If your goal is is something shallow, chances are it's not gonna sustain you long term. So goals that are that are rooted in things that are more meaningful to a person are ultimately more effective. So if your goal is better health, well, there you go. With that comes all the benefit, you know, a whole host of other benefits. I mean, for for like a lot of teenage boys, the goal is to get chicks, pick up chicks. That's not sustainable. But Shit, that's still my goal. I'm just kidding, <laughs> Jesslyn. Please don't get angry. That was obviously a joke. <laughs> Disclaimer at the bottom right here. <laughs> Warning. If you are a girlfriend, heed. Honestly, though, call me on my... Uh, my on your pager? Uh, fuck, I don't even remember that app. <laughs> uh, I ruined that joke. WhatsApp? Yeah, WhatsApp. Thank oh, you. WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that, that was another thing. That guy asked me if we could talk on WhatsApp, oh, the, the African guy. You're, you're responding tonight, I hope you know. I, I am. It's I guess I am. Um. I want to say something I thought of when you were saying uh, the last thing before we started BSing yeah. is that more BS coming at you. <laughs> that if your endeavor doesn't make your nipples hard, you know <laughs> that you're getting into the wrong thing. You need to find what makes your nipples hard and you need to let it kill you. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm getting that tattooed on my neck. <laughs> find what makes your nipples hard. <laughs> my new slogan. <laughs> Just like uh, cold weather. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm a meteorologist now. Ice cubes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that uh, that handsome old man walk around naked in the gym locker room. Ooh. Uh, I mean, what? Ooh. You, yeah, you got to do that bend over and kind of just like cover your, yeah. your nips up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've <never> done that. <laughs> but let us know if you guys have ever... Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. But yeah. To come back to it, have, be, be secure in the reason why you're doing it. Um, it's just like uh, another example here. I started attending college classes when I was younger to go into the medical field. Why? Because everybody told me it's a nice, secure job that makes money. Now, did that mean jack shit to me when I was 16? No, I did not care. I wanted to have fun, so I would rather have played guitar. And guess what? That's what I did. So I failed at my goal of going into the medical field. But it wasn't really your goal, it sounds like. Exactly. Sounds like. And that's another thing, very important thing to note, is that I really, really, really hope everyone listening takes it upon themselves to pursue their personal interests and not just go out and do what they think they have to do because your parents said so, because society said so. Even do fitness. what you want to do. Fuck it. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We we try to, you know, encourage everybody to partake in consistent fitness, but ultimately you have to want it for yourself. And so make it enjoyable, make it exciting, make it something that you can sustain because you need to do it. 
exactly. for, for the sake of yeah. your own health. We, we have this entire project going because we thoroughly believe in the importance of taking care of your body and how it can benefit your life in many, many ways. So that is one truth is that exercising and eating right or eating nutritious foods, I don't want to say right or wrong. There's <laughs> a lot of different ways to eat. Yeah. But paying attention to these things is should be your responsibility as an adult or as any person like even if there's some kids listening to this like it's not you you should definitely start sooner than later and your journey will be easier right yeah no don't don't do it because we tell you to do it i mean if if you're so low in motivation and that's what's going to take that's what it's going to take to get you started then all right do it because we told you to but ultimately it's going to come down to you doing it for you you're worth it you're worth the the effort and when it gets tough that's what you fall back on why are you even showing up to the gym is it just to get sore is it to impress people no you're doing it because there are so many benefits to be had from it things that amplify your life in a variety of ways a quote that i read in that ignite the fire book uh, not by the author, but from someone else that he had featured in the book was that you should be exercising because you love your body, not because you hate your body. Yeah. So yeah. even if you're not at a place to where you're satisfied with the way you look and stuff, you should be exercising not because you hate the way you look right now. You should be exercising because you care about your body and you want to improve it. Right. And that's how you sustain it. Um, when I started working out, I, I started because I hated my body, but that was not a healthy relationship. And it led to a lot of issues, especially in terms of eating and, you know, just being way too critical of myself and what I was doing. And I realized that none of those things were really serving me in my goal because somewhere along the way, while I was in the gym, I realized, well, I, I can hate my body and do this stuff. But at what point do I start like loving it when I when I get closer to my goal? Like, where's the line? Because it was pretty damn blurry. But turns out it was actually not that blurry. I went from hating my body to loving my body in almost an instant because I, I made that realization. It was an epiphany. Well, you're a freaking specimen, man. Ooh. You gotta love that. I'm only trying to be, but hey, even on the days where I don't feel like I am, I still love my body. It's cool. It's cool because I know that through consistency and all the discipline and just showing up time and time again, I'll get to where I want to be. That's why I love my body right now. It's, it's this way. To put, it, to put it another way, you're great where you are right now. You're super good where you are right now, but you can be better. Exactly. And for people who may be listening to this, I don't remember if we talked about this last time on the last episode, but great quote from Alan Roberts was that you can be anything you want at any size you want except for healthy yeah so there's uh there's that to consider as far as uh caring for your body is that you don't want to let things get out of control you don't want to be uh overweight or or too skinny either you don't want to be underweight uh you want to you want to promote health and then once you've got that go ahead and pursue whatever the sky's the limit yeah yeah i think these are all really good tips um with that i'd like to mention the iron will collective nutrition ebook again go ahead give that a download it's on the website ironwillcollective.com slash programs um link in the description here in the show notes the website should be ever improving as time goes on as well. We're hoping to devote a bit more time to that to get it in a place where we can start really putting a lot of helpful information on there for you guys. Yeah, we want it to be a go-to spot. So, you know, amongst all the other channels that, that we try to be present on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, we also have the website that's going to be like the the main thing where you can find our blog you can find our programs you can find our ebooks you can find our porn I, yeah what <laughs> <laughs> whoa oh well, it's the internet so <laughs> that's what true. else is on there we got to be well-rounded oh, this is russian mm -hmm. hackers man <laughs> <laughs> but if you're listening russian hackers 
Uh, we love you. Yeah, do us a favor. Just like top of Google or something. I don't know. Mm. Like hook it up. Yeah, yeah something. <laughs> but be sure to check us out on all of those those channels or anyone that is most convenient to you. Heck, we're even on Spotify, baby. Yeah, please, please use us to your advantage. We are doing this because we want to help the community. And if any of this information helps you, consider sharing it with somebody else to see if it can also help them. And again, remember, don't take this as gospel. This is merely ideas of things to try yep. and ideas to open your mind to new possibilities. So always keep that in mind when taking anybody's advice. Right, yeah, we're just trying to broaden your horizons as we broaden ours. But we learn together. Yeah. With that, with that, if you have any feedback on how we could improve, we'd love to hear it because that's the name of the game is just getting a little bit better. And um, man, 11, 11 episodes so far. So it's been almost 12 weeks here of nice consistency. I don't know about you, John, but I've been having fun making these and I can't wait to make more. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm waiting for the triple digits now. Oh yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there in a couple years. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna double it up. We're gonna do two episodes a week now. No, I'm just kidding. We're not. We're not. Yeah. Not yet, at least. But if you have, unless you have anything else to add, I think we will close on that note. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back again next week, same time, same place. Have a good night. Good night.